So how do I make a realistic drawing to paint from? Hi, I'm Ken Campbell, and today I want to share with you one of my drawing techniques called drawing from the flat. I'm going to demonstrate how I do a loose drawing from the flat, that is to say, from a flat photograph, poster, print, or painting. This is the kind of drawing I do as preparation for a new work. I want to get important features correct, so I'm not going to worry about little details so much as getting the major shapes right. And I've got some shortcuts and tips to share with you. So let's get into it. I wish I had learned drawing from the flat when I first started to draw, because it's logical, direct, and you get good results fast. It seems, no matter how long I've been making art, and I've been at it a while, I always feel the need to improve my drawing. It's a universal thing with artists, I think. And I think you'll find artists and art students agree the single most important skill artists need to master is drawing. Luckily, with drawing from the flat, this is very easy to do. This technique goes back to the Renaissance art academies and is still part of serious art studies today. So, what is drawing from the flat? Well, simply put, it's copying what you're looking at. But wait, it's even easier than that, because the thing you're copying isn't three-dimensional and tricky, like a still life or a Phaedra's pet lizard. It's a flat, two-dimensional piece of paper, and you can touch it and measure it. Here's one of the best things. The simple techniques you learn here makes all future drawing challenges much, much easier to do. Here are some drawing shortcuts and tips to consider while you watch me create this drawing of the pensive baker from the flat. I measure the drawing lines with a knitting needle and judge small lines by eye. I start by measuring the box-shaped envelope and drawing it on my surface. Then I measure from the edges of the envelope to various features and transfer those measurements to my drawing. Most of my lines are medium-length straight lines. I add curved lines once I've mapped out the edges of my major shapes. Since I use my right hand to draw with, I use my left hand to measure with, so my dominant hand is always ready to draw. I keep the reference photo on my left or non-dominant side, close to the sketch pad. Every line is temporary. I've watched many good drawers and I've noticed that they are always correcting their lines. So I don't fret about making mistakes. As a matter of fact, those early rough lines, well, they help me place the right lines later on. I started drawing with loose lines and gradually tighten them up as the drawing progresses. And I don't constantly erase light misplaced lines. I ignore them, especially early on in the drawing. And don't make really dark lines as you begin. They will simply get in your way as you try and shape your drawing. Keep your lines light. I find that there's time near the end to clean up any unwanted lines and tones. There are a bunch of drawing techniques out there, but I think this is the first one I would master because it has the easiest, shortest learning curve. Some artists find it's all they really need, and if you want to learn more, it's the perfect prerequisite for many other drawing techniques. Why draw with vine charcoal? Well, vine charcoal is a traditional drawing medium made from either willow branches or vines, and that's all. There's no clay in it, no wax, no oil, just charcoal. The benefits of that include it is easy to draw with, easy to erase, easy to clean up, easy to permanently fix with a workable spray fix. A fixed and sealed vine charcoal drawing can easily be painted over with oils. And for me, one of the best features is that it is very much like working in oil paints. Easy to apply, easy to smudge, easy to erase. However, do not confuse vine charcoal with compressed charcoal. Compressed charcoal has some great features like its intense black, but it is made with a greasy binder that makes it difficult to erase and clean up. Not what I recommend for a beginner. What you learn, drawing from the flat, includes how to really see shapes, how to use traditional drawing materials, how to accurately measure distances and angles, how to simplify reality to make it drawable how to create a realistic contour drawing, and 
how to simplify the world of light and dark into five simple black and white tones. The benefits of learning this technique include you'll be able to create realistic drawing from any flat reference. You'll be able to easily move into drawing from the round. You'll have improved your drawing, painting, designing, and 3D work. And better drawing will improve your artistic confidence. I have listed my regular materials for vine charcoal drawing on the screen, and I've also provided a list in the notes below. Here are a few tips to becoming a successful drawer. Number one, practice a bit every day. I like doing my drawing for 30 minutes or so early in the morning when I'm bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Number two, when drawing, remember to simplify everything. Only record the big shapes. Suggest the minor shapes if necessary and ignore all the small details. Number three, select photos of simple objects to draw, like an empty bowl, a face, a small house, an old car, a figure. You get the picture. Number four, avoid complicated or busy images. They take too much time and are frustrating to draw. Wait till you've mastered this technique before getting fancy. Remember, baby steps. And number five, don't worry if early drawings aren't great. We all have a few bad drawings in us that just need to come out. Try to improve a little bit each drawing. Thanks for joining me today. I hope there was something in this video that you can use in your studio practice. Please feel free to like, subscribe, and comment. And to learn more, visit my website at kencampbellfineart.com. See you next time.